Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. If you'd like any of your Ramadan related questions answered this month, you can email us at questions at amau.org. وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول. The question we're going to be answering today is as follows: When is a person considered sick such that they are excused from fasting? الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. This question is uh, a question which was asked to us in many different forms. And what we did is actually we gathered them together and amalgamated them into a single question. But among the people who asked this question were those who asked about someone who is very old, who isn't necessarily sick. But uh, they are very old. Are they exempt from fasting? Someone else asked about type 1 diabetes. And there were others who asked about al-sihr and al-waswasa, about magic and about whispering from the shaitan. And so what I wanted to do is to amalgamate these questions together and bring it into a single question about those that are exempt from fasting. So we're going to come first of all and we're going to mention a few different statements of the scholars in this regard so that we can get a, an idea of what the limits would be in terms of what sicknesses are an excuse for breaking the fast and what aren't. And then inshallah, we'll come to try to summarize it in a simple way inshallah for everybody. So Ibn Qudama in his book Al-Mughni, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, وَالْمَرَضُ الْمُبِيحُ لِلْفِطْرِ هُوَ الشَّدِيدِ الَّذِي يَزِيدُ بِالصَّوْمِ أَوْ يُخْشَى تَبَاطُ أُبْرِهِ He said, the sickness which allows a person to break a fast or not to fast is that which is strong, it's shadid, it's severe. The one that will get worse through fasting or whose recovery would be slowed down because of fasting. So we can see from this that there is a, it's not every kind of sickness. It's not everything. And then he mentioned from Imam Ahmed that he was asked about fever. And he mentioned that Imam Ahmed included fever in the things that were permissible to break the fast for. So we can see there's not every kind of sickness. And we're going to come to some examples of that. And he also said, and he mentioned another category. He said, He said, the healthy person who's scared that they're going to become sick. So here we're dealing with another side to the, uh, another side to the, to the mas'ala. And that is a healthy person who today, when they started the morning, the morning came and they are healthy. But they fear that if they fast, they're going to become sick. And it's not an irrational fear, but a, a genuine, maybe they have a, a sickness, like for example, diabetes or something like that, where if they fast, they fear that they will become sick. He said that that is the same as the sick person who's fear, who fears getting worse. Those two are are the same. And in Nawawi, in his Majmu'a, he also, uh, he also mentioned Al-Marid Al-Ajiz and his sawm He mentioned the person who is sick and unable to fast. The person who, he, he thinks he's going to get better. It's not a permanent sickness. That person doesn't have to fast. But here, and in Nawawi, he mentioned, he mentioned here, إذا لحقه مشقة ظاهرة بالصوم. He said, this has to be a clear harm in this person fasting. There has to be a clear hardship and a clear harm uh, in this person uh, fasting. Then he said, Rahimullah ta'ala, وَأَمَّا الْمَرَضُ الْيَسِيرُ الَّذِي لَا يَلْحَقُ بِهِ مَشَقَّةٌ ظَاهِرَةٌ لَمْ يَجُزْ لَهُ الْفِطْرُ بِلَا خِلَافٍ عِنْدَنَا he said the person who has a very small sickness that really isn't any great hardship for that person to bear. It's not allowed for them to break their fast and there is no disagreement in this issue among us, among the, the ulama of the Shafi'iyyah. There is no difference in this, among, in this example. 
And Sheikh Ibn Taymin, rahimullah ta'ala, he gave some examples of the sicknesses which are very mild and which you can't break your fast for. He said, المريض الذي لا يتأثر بالصوم The sick person who doesn't actually get affected by fasting. He gave an example of having a cold or a mild headache or a small amount of tooth pain. He said, وَمَا أَشْبَهَ ذَلِكْ The similar kind of things. He said, فَهَذَا لَا يَحِلُّ لَهُ أَنْ يُفْتِرْ That person is not allowed to break their fast. So we've understood from this that the issue of the person fasting, the sicknesses, we can divide them into two categories. Those sicknesses which really are easy to manage with fasting. The person can manage it. You have a headache, you could have a headache the day you're not fasting also. If it's mild, we're not talking about the severe migraine that a person desperately needs to take a painkiller for it. But we're talking about a mild headache, a mild cold, a person who just doesn't feel very good on the first day that they fast or one of the days that they fast, maybe they miss the suhoor and they feel a bit hungry and they just feel a bit ratty and irritable. These are not permissible for a person to break the fast for. What is permissible is that which is shadeed. It has a degree of severity. It has a degree of seriousness and which it has mashaqqa in it. It has hardship in it for the person who would wish to fast. And that can we can link that to the statement of Allah Allah wants things to be easy and not to be difficult. So we, we understand that someone who's coming to physical harm, extreme harm, is hospitalized or the person's going to die because of it or they're putting their health at risk in a serious way, that person shouldn't be fasting. They shouldn't be fasting. And they shouldn't be kidding themselves and telling themselves that I should be fasting. That person, they, they shouldn't be fasting. And likewise, the person who has that mild illness or mild conditions, that person should not be breaking, shouldn't be breaking their fast. So here we can categorize some categories here. We can bring and, and summarize and talk about some categories. We can say the, the sickness, which is going to get significantly worse or the, the cure for it is going to become significantly delayed. That's one example of a sickness that you should not fast with. One that is going to get worse or one in which your cure is going to be significantly delayed. We're not talking about get worse, like you have a headache and you fast and it gets a little bit more, but it gets significantly worse or the delay is significant. The second one is that which there is mashaqqa shadida. There is hard, great hardship for the person to fast in that situation. And the third one is when a person genuinely feels, genuinely fears that they will become sick. And we're not talking about the al-wahm, about false ideas and false concepts, but somebody who has a real medical reason to believe that they will become sick with a sickness which is serious if they were to fast, if they were to fast. And that's why uh, here, the scholars, they don't require necessarily that it is a shot for the person to go to the doctor. But many times in the fatawa of the scholars, you see that they advise the people to go to the doctors and ask them. And this is important because even though we don't make it a condition, and we don't say that it's a condition for the person, or we don't find in the books of the fuqaha that they made it a condition that a person must go to the doctor and get a permission, like a sick note. But what we would say is that many people struggle to categorize whether their sickness is really gonna is really affected by fasting or is really serious or is really gonna get worse. So in this case, they should go to the doctor. But in this, I would give you one piece of advice, which is I would advise that you are careful if you do have to go to a non-Muslim doctor, because a non-Muslim doctor may not it may not understand how important it is for a Muslim to fast. And they may say, oh, it's better for you not to fast. I don't recommend for you to fast. We don't think you should fast. When really they don't actually have the way to measure up the importance of fasting versus the sickness. So I think it's better if you do go to a non-Muslim doctor, you word it like that and you say to them, will I come to physical harm or will my sickness become significantly worse if I were to fast? Am I gonna come to significant harm or significant difficulty if I fast? Or is there a way I could change my medication or change my situation so that I would be able to fast? 
And if the doctor says, no, I'm sorry, that's not possible, um, then alhamdulillah, you, you, the person has done what is obligatory upon them. As for the one who is suffering from al waswas then my advice in this regard is not to decide for yourself. Because the one suffering from sihr and uh, mess al jinn uh, being possessed by the jinn and the similar kind of uh, sicknesses, the shaitan has a degree of hold over them. And that degree of hold over them or influence over them, it could lead a person to go away from obedience to Allah because of what the shaitan wants. And the shaitan tells you it's hard for you to fast, you can't fast. So my recommendation would be this decision should not be made by you. Rather, you should discuss how you feel with a person of knowledge who knows your situation and knows your sickness. Perhaps if you have a, a raqi or someone like that who is observing your case, or even if you don't and you have someone of knowledge in these cases who can look into your situation uniquely and advise you. Because I fear that a lot of people who have what's worse, the shaitan will tell them not to fast and make them feel as though they can't fast when in reality, the only one that would come to harm is the shaitan. And if we look at the issue of the uh, sicknesses being those which are going to delay the cure or the cure is gonna become delayed, rather we feel the opposite. The one who has wiswas, sihr, al mess, this person, it, it is believed and hoped that their cure will speed up through fasting, not slow down through fasting. And there remains one issue because type 1 diabetes was mentioned, and type 1 diabetes is a kind of sickness which is what one of the, the things the scholars talk about, al imrab, al muzmina, the sicknesses which don't get better. Usually speaking, generally speaking, they're sicknesses that don't get better. And in this, uh, a person is not required to make up the days because they can't make up you can't make up uh, any days if you believe that that it's it's not likely you'll ever be able to fast so you can't then make up the days so what you have to do is you have to feed a poor person nisfa sar half of a sar uh, you could measure it at one and a half liters or many of the scholars said that you can approximate it at one and a half kilograms and here uh, there comes another question which a person might ask which is that if I believe that I have a sickness that can't be cured, let's say type one diabetes, and I believe it, it's not gonna be cured. And then what happens is later on, I receive some experimental treatment or I go to a different doctor and I realize that I can fast. I take a different kind of insulin or I have a different kind of tablet or a different kind of injection. And I realize that I'm able to fast. Then in this case, what do I have to do? So in this, the scholars differed over three opinions. And it seems to me that the correct opinion is that the person does not have to make up those fasts from before, but they only had to have paid the fidya for it. That's enough. If they paid the nisfu sa'a for every day that they didn't fast, then inshallah after that, the uh, when they're able to fast again, they, they fast inshallah. So we hope that has answered the question with regard to the kinds of sicknesses that a person is exempt from fasting uh, for. And Allah Azza wa knows best. والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين